What's going on, everybody? It's your buddy. It's your pal, Spaz Phoenix, the YWC Reality Check, and you don't see my pretty sexy face, so you know I'm not alone. We're talking about AEW. Guapo, say hello. Hola, mis amigos. Pop your white claws. It's AEW time. Now, that being said, I want to make a quick announcement that I made on my NXT review that you guys probably saw yesterday. Uh, the whole, you know, I only do the pretty sexy face gimmick thing when I'm doing something with Guapo or Kristen is kind of going to go out the window because you can find my content now on Spotify, on Pocket Cast, on uh, Radio Public, on on Anchor, and hopefully soon on iTunes. So you might never see my face again if that's your choice. But for right now, for right now, that intro still kind of works. You won't um, see your face unless you post a picture on Twitter. You won't see my face unless you go back to the really, really broken platform that is YouTube and want to see my face. And or the, if you want some hilar- if you want some hilarity, just go back to SummerSlam. What was that? 2015 when I got hilariously drunk on stream. Yeah, in your mask. Yes. That was that, pretty great. That was when we were doing live streams. Remember live streams, Guapo? Remember Google Hangout? Petrick Farms remembers. Oh, Christ. Uh, remember when Kristen was still watching wrestling with us? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, not going there. Full Gear is a thing. Full Gear is happening this weekend, and it's the first... I don't. I don't. I think it's a sort of a B pay per view for what they are going to consider a B pay per view, but it's a little higher in the sense that it's the first pay per view that they've done since Dynamite started. Yeah. So what do they have to do in this to set it apart from the other pay per views that came before? Um, uh, they have to set a precedence of what what they want to do and establish storylines to continue and or start new storylines for Dynamite and for. Uh, the pay-per-views to come. Yeah. Uh, I mean, all the other, literally every other pay-per-view was essentially built on BTE, uh, BTE or the American Nightmare channel on YouTube. So all this and everything else, is, this is a culmination of everything that they, that they have done since starting Dynamite every uh, Wednesday night. I think because they have their show now, and the show is good, we're going to do some content sometime later on to talk about sort of where we think Dynamite is, you know, sort of six weeks in. I'm, I, I don't think we're going to do that tonight. We can talk more about the, the Wednesday Night War because there's a lot to break down there. I think this pay-per-view gets to breathe a lot more than the yeah. other ones did because, as you said, they were building the other pay-per-views on, like, being the elite, they were building it on the Nightmare. Basically, they were building it on YouTube, they were building it on Twitter, and they were building it off of the excitement of the fans, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but for the people that don't follow those forums, those shows had to quickly tell you why to care about the match, give you the match, and then give you a little bit of story after the match all in one sitting. Now, because there's a weekly show, I think it doesn't have to do that. It, it can concentrate on just being the card, not being the before the card, the card, and the after card all in one in one shot. So I think everybody, in, in a really weird way, because they've been trying to do so much in the other shows, I think this one gets to breathe. I think everybody involved gets to relax a little bit. Yeah. Uh, I think that'll show, I think, I... The one thing I will say, we've, we're six or five or six weeks into Dynamite, uh, and we sort, you and I sort of previewed what we thought Dynamite might look like, uh, what AEW as a whole might look like. My thing, I, I know you're bubbling about it because yeah. you're, you're the AEW guy. I will say, uh, yeah. I will say with all of my sarcasm aside, I've never enjoyed something so much that frustrates me so much <laughs> as, a, as a wrestling fan. Um, but it frustrates you because you know it's good, but it's, it's, it does have its, it has its tropes. It's, it's obnoxious, but it's not obnoxious in a way that I can point at one thing and say that they need to stop doing that. Right. Um, you remember what I used to say before about the Bucks specifically, and I, and I have a lot of respect for the Bucks getting to see them the past six weeks as I have, uh, getting even more familiar with them than I was. They are a great team, and I will take nothing away from them as wrestling talents. But my young Bucks. My Young Bucks analogy still works in the sense that they are good, their fans drive me nuts. AEW as a whole and their fandom has absorbed that theory. 
because they don't just want to succeed, they want everything else to fail. And that's something that WWE fans are accused of a lot of the time when I don't think anybody is saying anything good about main roster WWE right now. Yeah. Um, but I, for that, okay, for that, I get, I'll put my opinion in there. It's hard to say that for me just simply because in my group of immediate group of friends that watch but watch all the product per, well for the most part watch all the product none of us really bash WWE at all we enjoy NXT more however when it comes to main roster we are calling uh, WWE out for Raw and Smackdown and their bullshit because there are certain things from the sh- those shows that have simply just gotten worse yeah, but my thing is, is like, I, I, people misunderstand what I say quite a bit because I, I am affluent with my praise of NXT. It's my brand. I said it last night on uh, on NXT on my NXT review. I don't follow real sports, so being the Toronto guy, like I'm not a Raptors fan. I'm not a Blue Jays fan. I'm not a Leafs fan. I'm not a you know Toronto Rock fan. I'm not a Toronto FC fan. My team is NXT, so I will praise NXT. But the the translation that my praising NXT is automatically a dig at Dynamite is it's it's a tiring argument when really Wednesdays is like the best night of the week to become a wrestling fan. Oh yes, uh, I'll put it to you like this. My the other day, uh, as pretty much everybody knows, I'm getting married at the end of this month. Yeah, shout out to uh, Wapo who's going to see NXT and then getting married somewhere along the way. Yeah, somewhere like right there. But anyway. Uh, so I've been, I've, I've been going to the doctor, help myself lose a little weight and everything so I could look a little better, get healthier, everything else. And I saw, I was wearing a, uh, uh, I was actually wearing my, uh, White Claw Joey Janela shirt. <laughs> and, uh, he was like, uh, interesting shirt there. I'm like, yeah, well, you know, it's a wrestling thing. It's like, well, oh, okay, that's still going on type thing. Like, he's, he used to watch it back in the day, uh, type thing. Like, he told me how he used to watch it, uh used to watch the old stuff, Mid-South Wrestling, and all those old promotions. I'm like, well, so-and-so is still around. I actually just saw this guy the other, uh, not too long ago, all that yada, yada, yada stuff. But then I told him, so, if you ever feel like watching wrestling, on Wednesday nights is probably the best night because you have two pl- two things to watch. You can either watch uh, NXT, which is really good. It's WWE's uh, basically. Uh, quote unquote developmental, and then you have the brand new promotion that just started AEW that's very closely resembles old WCW, old older type promotions. He's like, okay, I might actually, might actually have to try it out. So, me telling him as a old 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 school type wrestling fan, and him saying I might actually have to watch it because it actually sounds interesting and fun. It's it's cool to know that. There are the older generations that have gotten out of watching wrestling from a while ago that might possibly come back into the fold as fans again watching AEW and NXT because both both promotions deserve it. Well, that, that was one of the interesting conversations going into the whole, like, the Wednesday Night War, the AEW, WWE thing in general was... You know, for the people that like AEW, and, and good for you, I mean, we wouldn't be talking about it if we weren't enjoying it, but it was that conversation of, are they just going to steal WWE's fans, or are they going to create new wrestling fans? And I think it's both. Because, I mean, if you yeah. co- if you combine the rating, I mean, yeah, they're fluctuating, but if you combine the Dynamite and the NXT ratings, there's a pretty decent rating of people watching wrestling on Wednesdays. Oh, yeah. I mean, both shows are getting traction. Both shows are getting DVR'd and... Uh, keyboard and whatever to be able to watch again. They're getting replays on YouTube. They're getting everything possible under sun for streams and watches and everything, which is a great thing for wrestling. I, you know what I would love, honestly, more... and I and I know the spirit of competition kind of prevents it. I would love to see what their respective ratings would be if, say, NXT was seven to nine and then AEW was nine to eleven. Oh, yeah. And they didn't uh, have anything to push against, and they both just got whatever their natural crowd was. Because I think if the, if they were separated, like even if you ch- separated it out into four hours of wrestling on a Wednesday, I think one or both of those shows would bury Raw and SmackDown in ratings. 
Yes, probably uh, honestly both because what you would end up seeing is uh, they would they wouldn't the be sharing an audience anymore. No, they would be the exact same audience, and what you would have is that first hour, like say it's NXT first, AEW last, which NXT would probably be the case. A, with uh, yes. If you had that, the first hour of NXT, probably the ratings would be okay. The second hour, it would start to spike. The first hour of AEW would be up higher, and then the second hour might drop off, uh, trickle a little bit. Because that's what would happen. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there, is, there is a little bit of exhaustion. Like, there is something to be said about, like, there is wrestling every day now. Yes. Um like, what is there? There's Raw on Mondays. On Tuesdays, there is AEW Dark and Impact. I watched, Two weeks ago, I watched Impact for the first time in, like, five years. And it's pretty good. Like, it's not setting the world on fire, but my bias kicks in because a lot of the people that are now on Impact are people that I know from Destiny. Right. Like, you got your Aiden Princes and your Trey Miguel's and your Josh Alexander's, and these are all these are all people that, to me, aren't Impact people. They're Destiny people. So, and with Shotzi Blackheart signing for NXT, I'm finally going to be that guy that I usually used to make fun of. Where they're, oh, I knew them before they were famous. Like, I'm going to be that douche now. You're going to be the guy that were that was uh, asking me, hey, uh, who's this person? Should I? Why should I be excited for them? Exactly. And and you know what? Like in, in all kidding aside, I hope somebody comes and asks me that one day. But yeah. I mean, then you move on to Wednesday. Wednesday's got, uh, you know, NXT and AEW. Thursday is where the NXT replay on the network is. Plus, that's where they put NXT UK now. Friday there's SmackDown. I know other people are still doing their New Japan ROH stuff. I know NWA th- is a thing. I tried it. It's not my cup of tea, but it's not terrible either. Um, but it's funny to me that SmackDown, being at the end of that busy week, still gets any ratings at all. Yeah. Anyways, well, you, have, you have to think it gets ratings because it's on a it's on a here in the United States. Fox is available everywhere, even without cable. Yeah. It's, it's and I mean, it's on, on the... Sports Sportsnet three. It's still on Sportsnet three hundred and sixty up here, which is right. I think available pretty much everywhere as well. But I mean, like, I would think even if SmackDown was fantastic, I would think the fatigue plus plus the fact that it's the weekend and people want to go out and do stuff. Like, I would think that their their stuff would sink like a stone. It's not great, but I can't believe anybody is awake as far as like the context of watching wrestling. I can't believe anybody's awake by Friday. Like, there's Agreed. so much. Plus, WWE's doing those, like, backstage shows with Renee and Booker, and and uh, apparently the ratings for those are not great. <laughs> um, well, shoot. But, uh, this past Sunday, I went to a, uh indie promotion here uh, down in New Orleans called Wildcat. Booker T it was supposed to be there with Stevie Ray, uh, and Booker T got pulled to go do... Uh, go do the what's called the talking smack or whatever it's mm. called. Mm. Oh, and 205 Live is on Friday apparently as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, no, lots and lots of wrestling. I've started ending off my NXT reviews with, hey, it's a great time to be a wrestling fan. I hope you guys find something you enjoy as much as I enjoy NXT because the shit there, there's enough shit out there right now that if you don't like Raw and SmackDown, you could not watch Raw and SmackDown. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, by the way, for the uh, Wildcat promotion, I got to meet Carlito and Rhino. Nice. Right? Nice. I Let's jump into the card, because the card is a thing, and I told you, I, I, I love what AEW's doing, but they piss me off at the same time, so we're going to we're gonna nip on those as we go as well. Starting off, I don't, this is not in any particular order, so this is going to be fun. I uh, found out, I think this week, Joey Janela, the bad boy, is taking on Sean Spears with Tully Blanchard. In his corner, doesn't say anything about it being a hardcore match. Sean, Sp- somebody's bleeding. Somebody's going to bleed. Somebody's going to get something or other. They did the thing with the cigarette uh, in the backstage area that was that was weird. Yeah. Um, kind of a cool story they're telling. Sean Spears is, is, wants to uh, put some stuff in his win column because they do the whole tally uh, of the wins and the losses and whatever, which I'm going to talk about later on because I think there's a flaw in that. Um, you got the Joey Janela thing where he wants to be known as more than just a hardcore guy. 
which is which is which is nice. Yeah, it's the whole like ECW, like oh they weren't they weren't just chair shots and table bumps. Like they had some great wrestlers there too. That's a, that's a decent easy to, to to digest story. But I think without even realizing it, W or uh, AEW is sort of developing this little like subsect of their of their roster that are kind of the hardcore division. Like if you take Janela, Sean Spears sometimes. Uh, Jimmy Havoc, uh, Darby, Allen. Darby Allen, Ambrose, depending on the context. Like, there are a bunch of guys that are just and, and, like... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Ambrose? Really? John sorry, Moxley. Sorry, Moxley. Um, I'm just he blown away. I'm just, right. I'm just blown, blown away that last week people thought his promo was better than Balor's. Just putting it out there. Um, but I know... <laughs> I think these guys are in danger of getting pigeonholed a little bit of like, oh, we don't have a really nice brawl type match for tonight. Let's pull pull out of the hardcore bin and we'll get like Sean Spears and John Moxley, which would be fantastic. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But I think to sort of slot them away, to use a WWE comparison, it's like you don't just want to slot away guys like Mustafa Ali and Cedric Alexander and be like, okay, they're cruiserweights and nothing else. And... I don't think they're doing that yet, but it's something I'm seeing sort of like just underneath. I hope I'm wrong, because when you get a, somebody that's sort of like labeled as the hardcore guy taking on somebody that's decidedly not, I think that's when you get better matches out of those guys. Yeah. I think Spears gets the win. Uh, uh, I honestly think Janela gets the win because he hasn't, I'm pretty sure he only has like maybe one win so far. Spears yeah. needs to be humbled slightly. Spears needs to be humbled slightly, but he's trying to build up his track record. Plus, he's got the advantage of a you know devious manager in his corner. I think they the, could play the up. Only, the only way I see Spears winning is either with a uh, manager interference with Tully. Yeah. Or we just get a blatant like low blow or chair shot and with the uh, referee not seeing it or something. The one thing I will because say... Because, if anything, they're trying to build up Spears to go for the title. Right. I I, I almost want to see a spot where, like, Joey Janela is, like, trying to get away from the hardcore label, so he goes to do something hardcore that he would have done, like, go to grab a weapon or go to grab a chair or whatever, and then he stops himself because he wants to do it, you know, the quote-unquote the right way, and that hesitation costs him because I think there's a really cool story they could tell there if they decided to go that way. Right. Okay. Um, I don't know. I, I feel like it was just thrown on this week, like, started by a backstage segment, so I'm not super well, hyped last about Last week, technically, from, uh, with, uh, the, because they started uh, with AW Dark. Right, but I, was, was the match announced then, or was that just, no, like, the an match, altercation? the match was announced, it was just an altercation, but the match okay. was announced just this week. Because the one thing I will say about AEW is they are putting feuds together that might not immediately end this week or might not immediately end at the next pay per view that might go longer. So Correct. something something that starts this week might not a, might not right away be jumped on the next week, and that's okay too. So as far as it actually being confirmed that it was going to be on this pay per view, I thought that was a little sudden. Nothing against either guy. I'm sure the match is going to be great, but it's not as built as most of the other matches on this card are. Yeah, but. I don't see this match needing to have had a long build. That's fair. You know what kind of does have a, a long build? Like an entire tournament worth of build? SoCal uh, Uncensored what... versus the Lucha Brothers versus Private Party. Basically... I'm okay with it. Yeah, I'm really good with it too. I like the ranking, the way they're acknowledging the ranking system, like with the medals for the gold, silver, and bronze of the division. I think that's a really cool touch. Um, I would have... I think they went one step more than they had to. It's going to be a great triple threat match. I would have been happy just with a straight rematch of the finals of the tournament. Um, yeah. But I'm not... My, my feelings aren't hurt with Private Party being thrown in there, but I do... And it's not their their own fault at all. I do still feel like they are kind of Street Profits light. <laughs> more or less, yeah. Which, which, I, I which isn't a bad thing. It. If you're going to remind me of another tag team, then remind me of another tag team that I like. Correct. Um, I do like the story. Uh, I do like there being some sort of physical manifestation of where you are on the card if you're not the champion. The thing with the medals, I didn't catch it when I was watching um, 
Dynamite because I was very tired at the time. Other people started talking about it, and I'm like, that's a that's a really good shout right there. That's really yeah. good. Now they don't necessarily need to do that for all the divisions. Oh no. But I think it's a really cool thing. Um, the one thing I will say about the tournament because I thought the tournament was great, and I've got something that I'm going to say about the Young Bucks later on. But I think they they foreshadowed the end of the tournament way too early when they started the feud between SCU and the Lucha Brothers when they were the only two teams that had a story going with each other. And it's like, well, you're the on- they're the only ones with a story, so obviously they're going to be the ones in the finale. Uh, I thought that that was a, like a little like a growing pains type of misstep, but the story they told was great, so I can't really complain about it too much. Uh, the way they took out... Uh, Daniels and the fact that Scorpio Sky had to be written back into the story whereas he had taken a step aside to let the two older veterans be the representatives of that team and then reluctantly come back into that spot I thought that more than anything else in the story was was the story of SCU Lucha Brothers are just insane you've been telling me about them forever I gotta tell you you're right again that's (laughs) fine (laughs) Private Party I look for Private Party to step up in this match. Maybe so far as to be the highlight of the match. I don't yeah. think they're winning. I don't no. think the Lucha Brothers yeah. immediately winning after they lost in the final does the titles any good. I think SoCal comes out. SoCal looks great. Maybe Daniels makes his return post-match assault. But other than that, SoCal's coming out of this on top for me. Cielo. Mielo. Discount, Sorry, gotta, discount, I, I Mysterio. Have, I have to go with the Luchas. You know that. Aren't they still the AAA champions? Yes, they are, technically. So, this early in the company, you want to see people walking around with double titles. Yes. That, that's one way to that's one way to go. I mean, I Jericho's think... going to go to freaking New Japan to face uh, Tanahashi in freaking January. Yeah, so. but is that is that going to be recognized as part of the AEW story? Because Omega went out and got some other weird title last week or the week before, did he not? Did he, didn't he, he win? He, didn't he win the Mexico? Uh, he was like AAA, tri- AAA, AAA title? Mega title or whatever. Yeah, something like that. But he hasn't worn it on on Destiny or, or Destiny on Dynamite. AEW. Um, I don't know. So it's it'll be weird, like because the the tag titles that lucha brothers hold have been part of the AEW show so they're part of the canon uh i don't think necessarily with jericho or even uh like look at moxley when he was the new japan us whatever title they didn't make it part of the story in this case lucha brothers having those titles part of the story i don't think in canon they want to make them double champions already because they want their own tag titles to be on the platform you know what i mean right I don't know. I plus SoCal is is really good, and friggin' Kazarian's just cocky as hell, and it's and it's good. Like I say, Private Party, this is their match to make, uh, to really sort of make a statement because the other two teams are already awesome. I'm gonna go through the two women's matches really quick because I don't really have much to say. I'm gonna let you say your piece, and then we're kind of gonna move on. Um, Bea Priestley versus Britt Baker on the kickoff. And Riho defending the title against Emi Sakura. It's a match. <laughs> it's a match. Times two. Quick. Sorry, my dog's barking. No uh, worries. I like Riho, and I like Britt Baker. I wish the two of them were fighting and it was one match and we could double the time. Yes, agreed. Um, uh, I'm not sure about it, honestly. I mean, it's a good match. It's going to be a good match. I'm just... Spoiler alert, I'm I don't to... think Riho's losing the title. Uh, no, Rio's I, not losing that I like her. Right now. Um, they've tried to show us a bit more of who Bea Priestley is, and she looks cool and all that, and she seems pretty decent in the ring. I have nothing to say bad against her, but I, that's because I don't have anything to say about her. And Britt Baker sticks out to me as, like, she's the star. She walks out on the stage, and she already knows who she is, and she's got, like, that it factor type thing. I would rather... I would still want Riho to win, but I would rather this just be one match between Riho and Britt Baker. We saw it on Dynamite, and it was great. I'd love to see a rematch of that rather than the two matches we're getting. Um, it's very much that a case and... of of what what it's been on the other shows with, uh, okay, this is the part in the AEW pay-per-view where we give you some women. 
<laughs> and that's really unfortunate when, as as I've said, you're going right head to head with NXT, who are firing on all cylinders in that regard. Yes, and I like Rio. I still do like Rio as the champion. Um, however, I still think that Britt Baker was going to be uh, the was going to be the champion. However, because of that concussion that she suffered at Fight for the Fallen, that that's what sidelined her for it. And see, I don't really like that either, because if the original plan was to make her the champion, and the story becomes Riho's just keeping the belt warm for her until she comes to get it... And that's, that's the thing. I don't, I don't... I think they called the audible, and now they're going a different direction, because they like Rio as a champion. Yeah. She's a believable champion, because she is an amazing wrestler. So, it's... It's hard to say. I think the original intent was to have Bake, uh, Britt Baker as the champion, but now I think they are. I think they're hung and stuck. No, I don't want to say stuck with, but <laughs> I, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. They, they they're enjoying and liking this run with Rio as champion. I I think she holds it through the next year. Well, the thing is too with Riho is like I like I don't follow Japanese wrestling. You know this. Everybody listening to me knows this. But she does have that generic, and I mean this in a positive way, even though it's not going to sound positive. She does have that generic sort of cartoon quality likability to her. And if you if you're not somebody that I'm incredibly familiar with, um, then you got to go with a very broad, likable, energetic performance because that will. That will get you through if the people don't already know who you are. Right. Uh, I, mean, I, I, I can't wait. I can't wait until Shotzi Blackheart debuts in NXT because uh, I think that's going to happen for a lot of people. Look at uh, just this past week of Dynamite, which had uh, the women's uh, tag match with Rio and Rio getting, getting pinned. Like, yeah, they're already showing her being getting a little weak, weakened as the champion. Yeah, but. I don't think that they're going to pull the trigger and have her lose just yet. No. But but it's they're showing they are showing that she can be defeated. Yeah. However, they are showing that she's still she's going to be having a good show as a very strong champion. Yeah, and I mean for the size of her, she sells like crazy. Oh, yeah. Um, no, nobody's having the same arguments about her that they're having about Marco Stunt because Jim I mean, most mostly uh, Jim Cornette's an idiot. But you also have to think too. She has twelve years of wrestling experience Absolutely. underneath her belt, where Stunt has what four? Yeah, but she can still like when you're that experienced. It's almost even more impressive when you can look like somebody brand new, somebody scared out of their wits, and like I'm, yeah. not to say that she's scared of her opponent, but like when you take a bump, that's like, oh fuck, I could have just died there. Yeah. The, the more experience you get, the less that fear would be in you. So the fact that she can still put that out, I think, is amazing. I, I'm yeah. I'm sort of like pulling and, pu- and pushing with my compliments here because. I want to know more about her. I think they've just put her out here as like, here's this happy, bubbly, you know, Bailey done properly person <laughs> like her. But there, there yeah. are there are things lacking. And you you mentioned Dynamite, um, AEW as a whole are still introducing their women's division to us. So we'd like to get to know individuals. They gotta stop leaning on the crutch of just we'll show you six or seven of them at once. Here's a tag match. Correct. They they they. I, I, they're trying to set up having a women's tag team. Oh, Christ. Uh, look, I hate to say it. I feel like they're going to do better with it in AEW than they would how they're using it in WWE. Uh, well, when those titles exist on NXT, it's great. Look at Team Kick versus the Kabuki Warriors two weeks oh, ago. Oh, yeah, that was a great match. I mean, when I mean, you just need to rebrand them as NXT titles. I mean, the NXT Cruiserweight title is probably one of the most valued titles in the company right now. All right, look look here. Uh, what's what's his name? Uh, <laughs> who who's the who's the NXT uh, cruiserweight champion at the moment? Isn't it uh, Leo Rush? Leo Rush. Yeah. He came to yeah. collect. We're, hey, we're getting we're getting Leo Rush versus Angel Garza next week for the title, and I can't I can't complain about that. I mean, yeah, that's gonna be a good match, but. Anyway, I want I want to see I want to see him versus I know we're diverting now. I want to see him versus Swerve Scott because Swerve Scott had a good match this week. Um, But yeah, not what we're talking about right now. Uh, Adam Page versus Pac. 
as much as I know they're trying to recover the Hangman Page character, because I think he fell a bit flat when he went up against Jericho, uh, I want to get behind him in a way, but in a much bigger way, I just want to watch Pac come in and be an asshole. Look, you just got to get with cowboy shit. That's it. <laughs> Literally, Pac coming out, cutting his promo about, oh, I saw you come out here with your naughty words. <laughs> I'm like, that's literally all it did. Like, because he came out here and said cowboy shit, and I hate to keep diverting back to WWE, but it's like when you've got the women WWE cutting a promo, it's like, I'm coming for you, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's, okay, it's, so that, it's... That's so... slightly different because that just gets annoying after a while because... They literally re- recycle the same exact promo over and over again. Yeah, but I, that's but that's what Adam Page is like. I'm not saying he's a bad promo in general. I mean, like that one specifically when he's trying to get everybody riled up and like some people are buying it, some people aren't, and and then he throws in shit and everybody's like, mm, you wouldn't have been able to say shit in WWE, and it's just sorry, it's 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 a thing. Um, I want to get behind him. I wanted to get behind him when he was facing Jericho, even though I didn't really think he was going to win. Um, I mean, nobody did, but you know. <laughs> well, it was one of those, like, how is AEW going to set their standard right from the get-go? Are they going to get behind the yeah. young guy right away, or are they going to put the belt on a on a legend so that they, the belt can have some prestige and then put that prestige on somebody else eventually? Like, there was a debate to be had there. I, I'm not totally saying, like, I'm not sitting here saying Hangman sucks and he shouldn't be champion. That's definitely not the case. Right. But it was he, it was they were going to go one way or the other. He is championship caliber. However, yeah. he needs to be groomed a bit more, like a horse. He needs to be developed for the people that turned on their television six weeks ago, and that was the first time they saw him. Yes. You like, and I think AEW does this a little. Other than like the main main guys, AEW does a lot of. Well, they know him. They would have seen him in. I mean, not specifically him, but like anybody. Well, people watch Japan. They know who so and so is. People watch ROH in the Indies, and they know who this is. Or people have watched, you know, our pay per views. And we literally said, um, not us, but Kristen said, like, I'll watch an AEW pay per view once they have their weekly show. And I thought that was a that was a pretty fair take because. Show me what you're going to do. Don't show me a collection of people that have already done stuff somewhere else and call it your show. And I think that's a fair take. Yeah. Um, but for those people that have that take, what is Adam Page other than a guy that just goes in there and has good matches in a company full of guys that go in there and have good matches? Whereas Pac is just an asshole. And, uh, <laughs> um, I'm picking Pac. I, I'm picking Pac, too. I kind of feel bad for Adam Page, but at the same time, there's reasons I'm behind Pac. Yeah. Now, we've got the Young Bucks versus Santana and Ortiz. Buck. I just finished I just finished praising the Young Bucks a second ago. Going to tell you one of the problems I have with this pay-per-view. What, 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 tell me. Tell me, Spaz. What is the problem? I have a problem with this pay-per-view right here, right? What was the big thing when the company first started and the people in charge were announced what did everybody say there was going to be a whole lot of like triple h'ing and a lot of uh you know chest thumping and a lot of making sure that they were in the spotlight you know cody would be in the spotlight kenny would be in the spotlight the young bucks would be in the spotlight well coach well cody and kenny are in the co-main events right the lights out match oh it's technically not part of the show suck my dick it's part of the show (laughs) kenny kenny's in the main event cody's in the main event And then I figured for sure that that would flow through the Young Bucks. The Young Bucks would go and destroy that tournament. They would have the belts put on them. And that they would be the first champions. And there's your quadfecta of the four guys in charge being on the top of the company that they built. I was slightly wrong. Because they yeah, went out, they went. Bucks lost first round. Bucks lost first round, but it's like, oh well, they're they're not putting themselves in the forefront. Da 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 da. No, they're doing something even more smarter because throughout the entire tournament, what was everybody talking about? Oh, wasn't it so great what the Young Bucks did to put over another team? They weren't. Oh, I mean, they were talking about the team that won, obviously. But the conversation became, oh, they lost. Wasn't that nice of them? And I think that's a bit that's a bit obnoxious, but it's okay. And then the finals of the tag team tournament should have been on this pay-per-view, in my opinion. Agreed. Agreed. I think that's that's a a pay-per-view worthy thing to have. But no, 
Instead, they the finals of the tournament were on the weekly show, which is cool. You need to make the weekly show important as well. But the first tag team match announced for the pay-per-view was not a title match. It was, we got to get the Young Bucks on the card with them in Santana and Ortiz. So while they didn't plow through the tournament like I thought they did, they still used the tournament to put themselves over, and then they were announced for the pay-per-view before the tag team champions were. So there's still very much a... We're the Young Bucks, somebody else might be champions, but we're really the ones on top. Now, I'm not saying that they don't deserve that. I'm not saying that they're not a great team. I'm not saying that they're probably the greatest team in the company, and they perform like crazy, and they are insane in that ring and whatever. And I'm not saying that any of it is not deserved, but it's still that that element. It's like those fans out there of the Young Bucks that make me not like the Young Bucks are booking the company. Now that being yeah. said, now that being said, this is going to be a fucking fantastic match, and it's going to be great. Oh, God, yeah. But you, I mean, it's, but it's, do you get what I mean? F- it's LAX versus Generation Me. Wow. Oh yeah. Oh, apparently, apparently, uh, Impact Wrestling is going to have a retro show where they actually go back to being called TNA for a night, and they might have Generation Me versus the Motor City Machine Guns. That would be pretty good. <laughs> and I think that's fucking great. But, like, I, f- I feel, uh, like I say, I've never, when I said at the beginning of that I've never seen a company that I like so much that frustrates me so much, that's what this is. I can't complain about where the Young Bucks are, but yet, entirely, where the Young Bucks are frustrates me because you should not be booked over the titles of the division that you say that you're trying to make great. I mean, they might not. Look, we'll we'll find out Saturday. I, honestly, they'll probably be curtain jerking. Yeah. So. I don't know. I, I think the finals of the tournament should... Like, this is where I say, like, uh, SCU versus the Lucha Brothers would have been fine on its own without Private Party, because that match should have been saved for the pay-per-view to begin with. The crowning should have been at the thing. Like, they crowned the women's champion on Dynamite as well, and I think you could have saved that if if they had a sooner pay-per-view because i mean you couldn't have gone this long but that that should have been a pay-per-view event as well yeah i I, I can agree i mean it's it's nitpicks and it's purely small nitpicks that i would come up with but it's it's very much still okay young bucks cody and kenny are like oh look at all these guys we're proud of all our guys but we're here too and we're on top (laughs) and just there's that layer there's the layer of what's great and there's just under that there's this little obnoxious thing it's like whenever john cena shows up on raw it doesn't matter who the champion is at that point john cena's the guy it's very much yeah. that you know everybody in the comment section is going to come and cut my head off for comparing the young bucks to john cena but that's the only thing i can really come up with to compare it to now santana and ortiz are, are really fucking weird dudes, and I watched them on the countdown to Full Gear, talking about like where they came from and all that. That was really cool. Match is going to be great. I'll have to set my frustrations aside. Who do you think's coming out? Uh, Bucks. Bucks are winning. Okay. I want it to be the Bucks. As much as I just shat all over them, I want them to win. <laughs> Um, yeah. I think this is where you see uh, Jake Hager and Sammy Guevara get involved. I think this definitely devolves into a four-on-two situation. Uh, I think Santana and Ortiz are going to win, and nobody's really going to feel great about it. But it's got that, uh, you know, it's the wrong company, but it's, the, you know, it's the gang warfare thing between the elite and... Uh, the elite and the inner circle, which is a lot yeah. of fun. And if you, you obviously saw the end of Dynamite, and that was that yeah. was that was a brawl done very very well. And what's his name? One of the Bucks coming off the stageway, etc. I still don't like the Impact Zone tube entrances. That's that's not a thing that I'm gonna like anytime soon. But the rest of that was great. Yeah, the, get over the, it. The the, the, du- the dueling barbed wire with. Um, with Kenny and and Moxley broken up by Santana or, and Ortiz attacking them for for reasons, um, yeah no I, I expect it to be really good and yeah they'll probably shut me up about all my other kvetching. Uh Chris Jericho versus Cody for the championship. 
copy paste the rant I just had onto Cody. <laughs> Other than that, this match is going to be fucking great. Well, you know, when you have Le Champion. Le Champion, with a little bit of the bubbly. Here's the because... thing. Here's the thing. I, and I know you got stuff to say. I'm going to say one thing. The same ramble I just had about the Bucks, I was going to have about Cody as well. Because a couple of weeks ago, he had that big video with everybody basically talking him up, talking like all his teammates, all his whatever, DDP and his mom and his wife and all that, putting him over, basically sucking his dick for two minutes. I was going to come on here and rant about that. I was fully planned to come on here and rant about that. But then Jericho did his parody video of that this week, and I'm like, all right, all right, I'll let you have that. That that was fucking mm-hmm. good. He's sitting there in his ring gear in the bubble bath drinking the bubbly. <laughs> It's good. Um, I think it's just good. Like, there, there's all kinds of, like, oh, look, it's Y2J versus Stardust jokes that I could make here. But I can't say this isn't going to be a good match. I really can't. Um, how do you feel about the stipulations? Because there's a bunch of stipulations on this match now. I'm okay with it. Like, there's a stipulation because it's a title match. There's a stipulation because it's got a 60-minute time limit. I don't... All due respect to Chris Jericho, because he is a fucking legend. I don't think Jericho needs to have a 60-minute match. Ever. Like, that's just me. And I'm saying that for a bunch of reasons. I'm saying it because I want to enjoy it. I'm saying it because, you know, he is a little bit up there and might hurt himself if he if he tries to go 60 fucking minutes. I know he did it in Japan. It's fine. Michael Sidgwick can calm down in the comment section. Um, but on top of that, it is for the title. On top of that, he they're doing this weird judge thing where if it does go 60 minutes, there's going to be some judges on the outside that are going to decide the winner. Not really sure how I feel about that. I'll have to see how they execute it, obviously, because I don't know what that's going to look like. But also the whole, if Cody loses, he'll never, ever challenge for the AEW championship again, which... I mean, either he's going to win on Saturday, or that's going to end up being a lie at some point. Right. I'm, uh... I'm, 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 I'm seeing Jericho taking it home, and especially because that champion is probably the best champion ever. Yeah. As well as, not only is this Saturday full gear, this Saturday is also my birthday. There you go. And... And La Champion's birthday. Yeah. Hold on one second. Keep talking about the match. I'll be right back. Uh, Cody and Jericho together, just that's they're printing money just by themselves with the match because you have a top tier talent with Chris Jericho who can make a he he can wrestle a puddle and it would be good. And then you have Cody with you know all of his time in the business and the legacy, legacy quote unquote legacy. You know, old faction, WWE, Cody, Orton, Ted, Ted Jr. I'm rambling. Come there on, we go. Baby okay. We're rambling. All right. Um, <laughs> want to ask? I, and I don't know what you were just rambling about because I had to step away for a second. But I do want to get your opinion. You watched Dynamite this week. You saw it beginning to end, right? Correct. I did. What do you think about the promo from Cody? when he announced the stipulation and whatnot, like the promo where he was out there talking about what it means to him and his family. And he's going to, if I don't do this, then, you know, I'm never going to go for the title again. That promo as a whole, what, what was your takeaway from it? It's, it's Cody setting up. Basically, if he loses, he doesn't have to go for the title. He, he He's in a position where he really doesn't need to go for the title at all. He will at some point again, because, I mean, he's it's wrestling. Lose. Yes. Okay. But it's it's just good shit. Okay, couple things that I took away from the promo, and it's they're not necessarily specifically for the show, but just in general, because Cody, much like the Bucks, is great, but there's some things that I wish he wouldn't do, or there's some things AEW, I wish AEW wouldn't do in general. There's going to be the comparisons between Cody and Triple H or Cody and Jeff Jarrett or Cody and whoever because yes if you're in charge of a company sooner or later you're going to put yourself in a favorable position that's not even a bad thing if you run the company you deserve that you you put yourself in a place to do that but don't think because you come out in a promo and acknowledge that 
that we aren't still going to call you out on that. Like, if Triple H booked himself at a takeover to beat Adam Cole for the NXT Championship, he would get raked over the coals. Now, yeah. comparable to Cody Rhodes, Triple H, his vision was, was NXT. He was the one that took all the ideas to Vince. He was the one that got Vince to support it. Vince was his Tony Khan in this scenario. He has created that in his own vision. He has listened to what people don't like about the main roster, and he has fixed all those mistakes in this magical new golden black thing that we call NXT. Even still, even though it's his baby, he's, you know, Papa H, etc., if he put the title on himself, if he went in there and pedigreed Adam Cole and put the NXT title on himself, people would rake him over the coals for abusing power. Yeah. How? And I know there are some differences because they're at a different point in their career and whatever. If Cody Rhodes walks away with the title this Saturday, I don't see that as being that different. It's not completely the same, but it's not entirely different. And I don't think just by coming out and cutting a, ooh, behind the scenes, breaking kayfabe, you know, I'm talking to you as the boss of the company there for a second, promo, I don't think you negate that hypocrisy. Because I don't care. If he does become champion, cool. I'm sure it'll be great. He hasn't been really the world champion WWE or... or um, I know he's held titles in other places, but he, he never got to be, like, the guy. And he created his own company, he created his own belt so he could give it to himself so that he could be the guy. Okay, good for him. But I don't think that you totally erase the hypocrisy of that by coming out and cutting a promo about it. I think that's right. a little... I think that's a... They lean a lot on the fact that their fans let them do a lot. Like the whole, I go, I go back to the whole breaking the throne thing. If WWE took a direct shot like that at them, they'd get eaten alive on social media because AEW is doing it and they're the good guys. They get away with it. The same thing here goes for Cody. Now that being said, if he wants to do that, if he ever wants to turn heel and flex the "I'm the guy in charge" muscle and write a story where he abuses that power to get himself the title, entirely different. But I don't think you get rid of an issue like that by cutting a promo about it. I don't I I don't think that that's that I don't think that's the way. But also I am about done with Cody Rhodes doing the if I can't put the emotion out there any other way, I'm just going to keep up keep on bringing up who my dad is and do some Charlotte Flair ugly crying and that'll get the promo over. Mm-hmm. I put a comparison out there and this is the thing. This is what the, what this whole podcast is going to sound like probably. Everybody gets on Triple H for the overly long, overly dramatic promos that he cuts, right? Everybody right. gets on WWE when they're trying to put Roman Reigns over, when they constantly remind you who his relatives are. Everybody gets on Charlotte Flair when she cuts a promo and she's trying to get the emotion out there and she just throws on the ugly cry. She cries as, as easily as her dad blades, and, and sort of rightfully so as well. Cody Rhodes did all three of those in one promo, and it's just, he's good at it, and, and, and they're getting to a place that's really, really good, but it feels like they're getting to that place that's really, really good in a way that Cody really likes the taste of his own cock. Hey, that's <laughs> it's, Brandy. It's just, it's just a bit too much when she had brandy cutting the super serious oh as soon as i found out that he was going to get a title shot we knew we were going to lose him for months fuck off you're sitting there doing like voodoo and conjuring awesome kong up from the abyss but you're upset that your husband's got to go to a meeting and then have a title match like i get it i get that people are with cody i get that people support him as the guy that wwe never believed in and now he's out there on his own doing his dream and i'm happy for the guy but come on (laughs) when they put out that first promo i was like that was you you built your own company and that company obviously has a video department and you put all that together and you've created this entire entity called aew so that we could watch three minutes of you sucking your own dick and it happens. That's I want to cheer for the guy. It's the Bucks thing. I want to cheer for them because they're great. I want to cheer for Cody because he's great. I don't need 
Diamond Dallas Page and Virgil and <laughs> all this other... And when he threw in the undesirable to undeniable thing in the promo, it's a reference to the series that they're doing on AEW Dark, which is just an excuse for him to sit down with various people in his company and shit-talk WWE. <laughs> so that was right. even worse. Um, oh, it's just... There's so much, oh, I see exactly what you're doing, but fuck off. Like, that's that's my opinion of AEW as a whole. I see what you're doing, and it's great, but fuck off. Yeah. Um, I want I want Jericho to win. The champion will win. I want Jericho to win. I want this to, as much as, you know, a big, huge pile of people match is not always the answer, I do want this to devolve at some point into some big five-on-five with the uh, with the inner circle versus the elite and Dustin Rhodes, because you get five on five. I mean, that would be a match where there's no title match on that particular card, but it's not the worst thing in the world either. Right. And then we've got the lights out match between John Moxley and Kenny Omega, and John Moxley's actually going to show up for the match this time. Wait, he is. I'm an asshole. It's fine. <laughs> um. I like the He's story. Is not going to get staff infection on this one? What? He's not going to get staff infection on this one? No. And I could do without... I I, uh, I did watch the thing that they put out on YouTube, the countdown to Full Gear, the big, long piece that they did on on Moxley and Omega. And it was really well done. I, I do have to say, like I, like I say with WWE when they have stuff coming up, um, whoever's putting together these, like, long-form pre-show type things that they've got on YouTube is really good. The interview with John Moxley about, like, why he got injured in the first place, how his elbow was injured, how it got infected, you know, hey, what could have happened? Like, this is really serious, whatever. And I'm gonna say the same thing here that I've been saying with NXT a lot, because NXT did it with Tegan Knox, they did it with Dakota Kai, they did it with Tommaso Ciampa and whatever. Do these big emotional, like, injury and return things. I don't need to see surgery footage. Right. Because it's impactful, and it should be impactful, because it's visceral, and it's very real. Um, and I get what they're doing, but I think it's become a crutch that everybody leans on. And if, you're lean, if you show something once for the visceral effect to be like, oh my god, this is real life, and you know, build some respect for the character or whatever, but if you keep going back to it, you're now benefiting from some footage that technically could have ended somebody's life. And there's something a little gross to that. That's not specific to AEW. That's across the board. But I think that's something uh, on the whole as like wrestling fans watching video packages, that's something we could do a little less of. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to praise the story because the story is great, but AEW is pointing out a flaw in their own system with how great this story is. What kind of match is this? This is a non-sanctioned match. Right. Which means what? Anything goes. But what else does there it mean? There are no rules. But what else does it mean? What's John Moxley? Know. What's John Moxley pissed about? Uh, if he wins, it doesn't matter. There we go. Now, the selling point of AEW over. WWE over anybody else's. We're the ones that are going to make wins and losses count. Now, you wouldn't have a no disqualification. You wouldn't have such a violent match. You wouldn't have a match that's going to be the main event. I don't care if we turn the lights off, we turn the lights back on. This isn't really part of the pay-per-view, except it is. Um, it's probably the one with the most interest. The one with the most... Um, it is the main event, other than, uh, than the title, right? So right. it's it's... Would you say it's one of the most important matches on the card? Yeah. So, why have we created a scenario where, yeah, okay, wins and losses matter, and Bea Priestley versus Britt Baker, that match is gonna, that match is gonna count, and, and Joey Janela versus Sean Spears, which has only got, like, one week of build, that r result is gonna count, and Adam Page versus Pac, who have fought each other a bunch of times, that match is gonna count, and, you know, Young Bucks versus Santana and Ortiz, which isn't for anything other than to get them both on the pay-per-view, that is gonna count, but probably one of the most intriguing matches on the show with the best with the best build with the best story with the best oh we almost didn't get it because he got sick and could have died and whatever a lot of focus on this why is this the match that ultimately doesn't count right that that's 
it might it makes you say that like this match doesn't count as much as some of the matches that could have been left off the card. And that wouldn't bug me so much if it wasn't for the fact that they're oh we're the ones that make the matches or the results count and they they throw that like score ticker in your face on the graphic every time somebody comes out. If they weren't pushing that idea so much, then this wouldn't bug me so much. But I think they've sort of come around and kicked themselves in the ass with this because they're going to have to come back to a match at some point that does matter. And it's not like that match is all of a sudden not going to be personal and not have history and not be violent. So, yeah, again, much like the Bucks thing, that's sort of a structural thing that I have a problem with. Other than that, John Moxley, Kenny Omega are going to go in there and kick the absolute fucking shit out of each other. And it's going to be awesome. It's the match is going to be fucking great. Moxley's winning. Yeah, Moxley, uh, Moxley will be murdering Kenny Omega. Yeah. Yeah. Someone will die. Yeah. Yeah. I just... I'm I'm starting to ease up on my... You know, I get that Kenny Omega's a great wrestler, but why does everybody, like, put him up on a huge pedestal? I'm starting to get it. For those of you that have been playing along with me and Guapo since AEW started, uh, I'm starting to get it. He's good. He's 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 a yeah. good dude. Um, he's still not why I'm watching the company. If I want to be totally fair about it, um, much more as I said to you both off off recording and in other recordings, I'm much more interested in like the younger, uh, newer sort of just growing stuff. Like Darby Allen is a reason that I watch Dynamite more than yeah. Kenny Omega. Kenny Omega is a good part. Kenny Omega is going to have a great match. Kenny Omega has great matches, and he's a fun guy to watch. And I get that he's a big deal. Don't get me wrong. But if you're asking me personally, like, what am I tuning in week to week for? I'm more tuning in for Jurassic Express. I'm more turning in for Pac. I'm more turning in for the Darby Allen is 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 pretty much the top. I mean, Jericho being champion just because I'm a huge fan of Jericho. But as far as what's got my attention in this company specifically, I'm sorry, I'd rather watch Darby Allen than Kenny Omega. Now put the two of them in a match together, and I'm there. Oh, 100%. That match would be fucking amazing. It would be amazing. I will say, and, and a lot of the credit has to go to Chris Jericho for help, helping it along, but the Jericho-Darby Allen match, the where he was handcuffed for most of the match, that, yeah. was, that was fucking insane. Like, I mean, because Jericho was selling the shit out of all of it, and Darby was just like Jericho was Jericho was selling the shit out of it. But I Jericho was selling the shit out of it. But I don't want to say that it's all that because Darby Allen was doing some shit in that match that you shouldn't be able to do. He like yes. he climbed the ropes with no hands. <laughs> like he ain't got no, he ain't got no hands. I he ain't got no hands. What happens? Um. You ain't got no legs, Lieutenant. You ain't got no legs, Lieutenant Dan. Now, we, we both agree that Jericho's retaining, right? Yes. We both agree that John Moxley is going to win his match, even though it doesn't count. Yes, he's going to murder the Golden Boy. Yeah. We both agree that this is sort of going to be what AEW refers to as one of their B pay-per-views. Technically, yeah. Sort of, well, that's how it feels. Like it doesn't, it doesn't have like a WrestleMania feel, but it it has. Oh no, it, this is not going to be one of their big like mainstay pay per views. Like they might do it again next year, but yeah. Oh no, but even even if it comes back, like uh, I don't know what's a. I mean, it changed. It sort of changed its view after a little while, but I mean, Money in the Bank was ne- wasn't always considered a big pay per view. But I, mean, I think it started off just as a uh, as a match at WrestleMania. Match but I mean, yeah. but we've seen we've seen WWE like B pay per views that have almost been better because they were trying to be better than an A pay per view. Uh, right. So when I say a B pay per view, I don't I do not mean that as a as a bad thing. It's just you know sometimes you got your B, sometimes you got your A. You got your Intercontinental Champion, you got your World Champion. It, it is what it is, and you need both. But if we look at this as sort of a uh, as a very very strong B pay per view, plus it's got to carry the additional weight of being the first pay per view after they started on TV. Do does this? Do these two main events lead to Chris Jericho versus John Moxley for the title at their next major pay per view? Possibly. It all depends 
if they say if they try to pull some screwy shit with uh technically since the match wasn't sanctioned it didn't count for anything uh that that win didn't help boost his uh like spot oh i don't mean i don't mean like does this make john moxley a number one contender i'm just saying like does he come out on dynamite next week and be like okay does somebody want to fight me in a match that counts like come out with that swagger and i don't mean jack swagger because he's on jericho's team my only my only concern about that, and this is where I will even say that WWE fans are a bit of an assholes, right? Like I said, I can make my jokes about, oh, it's Y2J versus Stardust, right? Right. But if you do two pay-per-views in a row that are headlined by two ex-WWE guys fighting over the AEW title, like Jericho Cody here, Jer- Jericho Moxley at the next one, I can see there being some other people that would sort of look at that a bit funny. So maybe let yeah. this let this simmer... And then Moxley, like, interferes. Like, Jericho takes on his next opponent. I don't know. I, I At this point, I wouldn't really mind another round of, uh, like, if Jericho hurt Cody in the match for some reason, and Kenny just sort of stepped up and says, I'm going to stand up for my buddy, and you have another round of Jericho versus Omega to get us to a Moxley interference that sets up Jericho versus Moxley or a triple threat. That would be better, because at least you got Omega in there that sort of pulls back the, oh, we're just using all the WWE guys trope. Or throw Pac in there and make it a four-way, just, you know, laughing at Adam Page, because he's not in the title picture. <laughs> I'm, I'm perfectly okay with it being a four-way with uh, Pac, Jericho, uh, Mox, and Moxley and Omega. Mox. Yeah. God, that'd be amazing. That'd be a spot test, but yeah, it'd be amazing. Darby Allen in there, too. <laughs> I'm going to sneeze. Uh, <laughs> Darby, right, Darby Allen in there as a referee. <laughs> oh, God. With no hands. He has to count the so, pin with his head. Anyways, Lord, we're uh, getting officially as, tired in here. As, as, as we wind down, uh, <laughs> uh, question for you. Uh, what do you think is going to be matching tonight? Well, oh. Oh. You just threw that at me, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Curveball. Right it's going to be one of the main events. I think Janela and Spears and Paige versus Pac are going to be sort of fighting for that, like that Dark Horse match title. Like, because when I say Dark Horse, I mean like the best match of the night that you didn't expect. But I mean, yeah. we expect it out of the two main events. It's going to be one of the two main events. But I mean, you're kind of spoiled for choice, really. Correct. Um, I'm going to give the slight nod right now to Moxley Omega. Funny, because I was going to go with uh, Jericho uh, Cody. Okay, well, we'll see. I will say, what was the match on Dark? It was Omega versus Janela, and he fucking V-triggered him right through the ropes. Yeah. And he just sort of lay there dead. (laughs) I'm sort of like low-key. He does not hold back with the V-trigger at all. Like, he's yeah. going straight knee to face, that's it. Yeah, I, yeah, that doesn't look fun. The, the fucked up thing about that is, like, I know the one-winged angel is, like, super protected as a finisher, right? But right. the V-trigger looks like more of a finisher that, or sorry, the, yeah, the V-trigger looks V-trigger. like, m- looks like more of a finisher than, than the one-winged angel. Because the one-winged angel, depending on who he's fighting, is sort of awkward to get into, Whereas the V trigger, it's got the uh, the RKO appeal, where you can literally hit it on anybody. Hit it on anybody out of nowhere, anytime, anywhere, any place. I wasn't gonna do the hashtag out of nowhere thing, but there we go. Um, I mean, you know, it's you, funny. You gotta, give, you gotta give the out of nowhere to the guy who just re-signed with WWE for another five years. Yeah, but WWE themselves just re-signed with Saudi Arabia, so. Oh God. <laughs> That's a whole nother video, Spaz. We're not getting into that tonight. We won't. I just want to say. I, w- I just want to say because I know. I know you don't watch the Saudi shows, nope. but everybody has to admit the one good thing that came out of that was the fact that they did finally successfully get a women's match on the Saudi Arabia card. Even if you don't like the Saudi Arabia cards, I think everybody has to admit that that's something. Doesn't mean the show yes. was good. Doesn't mean the show was good. But it is a small achievement that we can be a little bit happy about. Yes, I I, I agree with that. But 
But it's also where we found out that uh, Survivor Series was going to be Raw versus SmackDown versus NXT. As well as uh, almost messing up my plans by keeping uh, people in Saudi Arabia. Because (laughs) I went to a Comic-Con this past weekend where I got a picture with myself and the future Miss Guapo with the New Day. Nice. There was a chance of them not being there, so... Yeah, it's, yeah, but it gave us NXT SmackDown. It did. It did give us NXT. NXT SmackDown. I, I love, it, I love the, kinda... I love the comparison. It's like, okay, what was better, the Raw after WrestleMania or the SmackDown after Saudi? At the moment, the Raw after Saudi, Saudi, or SmackDown after Saudi. Yeah, but the, the Raw was a really, really sad attempt to uh, to duplicate what they did on SmackDown. Yeah, but so, uh, all right. Yeah, we've rambled so, uh, quite long enough. Tell them where to find you. Find me at, on Twitter, at Guapo underscore 504, or on the Black Hat Feline channel, if we ever decide to post another video, video with me and Kristen. Yeah. I mean, Kristen hasn't been on here with me in a while, but send some love to Kristen, Black Hat Feline, on Twitter and yes. Instagram. And you guys know where to find me, or you wouldn't be here. But I will say... If you want to check us out in podcast form, go to Spotify, go to Anchor, go to Pocket Cast, go to Radio Public, go to Google Podcast once that link figures itself out. All the links will be done in the description box below. Just search Spaz Phoenix Podcast. I'd really, really appreciate it. Share it if you get the uh, if you get the inclination. But until then, I've been Spaz. He's been Guapo. We are your YWC Reality Check. Subscribe up there. Talk down there. Start a conversation. Keep all of these conversations going. Tell us what you're looking forward to at Full Gear. Talk to each and every last one of you later before right now I am tagging out. Bye, guys. Adios, mis amigos.